So I'm going to cycle through a nested for loop here, and the question is, what will be the value of count once this for loop completes, um, this nested for loop, for loop structure completes? You can see that count is starting out at zero, and at the end of execution of the nested for loop, count will be something else. The question is what? Um, it's pretty simple to answer questions like this. We just need to kind of track and see what our variable is. So in the first case, you, if you look at the variable row, we can see that it's going to take on the values 3 and less than 5 is the last one, so 4. So only 3 and 4. In other words, there will be exactly two times that the outer for loop will execute. Now inside, column is going to take on the values 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and actually 12, right? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 different times that that inner for loop will go through. Well, when I go through the, the outer for loop the first time, count is going to increase by to 8, and then when I go out and do it again, it's going to be increased by another 8. So basically, just the number of times of iteration of my outer loop, 2, times the number of times of iteration of my inner loop, 8, gives me the value 16. So since count is starting at 16, or starting at 0 rather, 0 plus 16 would give me 16 at the end. Um, some things that you could look for if you're, if you're, you know, on an AP exam, they, they might tweak some things. For example, um, is this really incrementing by one? It could be that they're stepping over some values. Uh, maybe there's a conditional statement here, and it's only incrementing count if certain things are true. Um, that could change things out. Also, be paying uh, close attention to these symbols, right? Um, less than or less than or equal to. Make sure you understand where it goes, where it stops. So you notice on my outer loop, I don't have the five because it wasn't or equal to, but in the inner loop I did have the 12 because it was also equal to.